March 12th, St. Gregory the Great, also called St. Gregory the First. He was born in the year 540 in Rome and died March 12th in the year 604 in the same city. Gregory was a Roman of noble birth and while still young was governor of Rome. On his father's death, he gave his great wealth to the poor and turned his house in Rome into a monastery which now bears his name and for some years lived as a perfect monk. The Pope drew him from his seclusion to make him one of the seven deacons of Rome and he did great service to the church for many years as what we now call nuncio to the imperial court at Constantinople. On the death of Pope Pelagius II, Gregory was compelled to take over the government of the church. Pope Gregory was the first pope who had been a monk, and he was elected to this apostolic chair when Italy was in a terrible condition after the struggle between the Ostrogoths and Emperor Justinian, which ended with the defeat of Totila, the king of the Ostrogoths, in 562. The state of Rome was deplorable. It had been sacked four times within a century and a half, conquered four times in 20 years, and no one restored the damage done by pillage, fire, and earthquake. St. Gregory, writing about the year 593, says, We see what has become of her who once appeared the mistress of the world. She is broken by all she has suffered from the immense and manifold misfortunes. Ruins upon ruins everywhere. Where is the Senate? Where are the people? We, the few who are left, are menaced every day by the sword and innumerable trials. Rome was decimated. St. Gregory at once called for the seven churches in the city to proceed in seven columns of people and meet at St. Mary Major. As they marched, they chanted Kyrie Eleison. All the while, the plague was still raging and people were falling and dying about them. Gregory inspired these poor people with courage, for he did not cease preaching and wished that their prayer should be made continually. A legend has it that the plague ended and a vision of St. Michael the Archangel was seen at the top of Heredian's mausoleum as he was sheathing his sword, putting an end to the plague. St. Gregory's pontificate extended for 14 years and was a perfect model of ecclesiastical rule. He healed schisms, revived disciplines, saved Italy by converting the wild Aryan Lombards who were laying it waste, aided in the conversion of the Spanish and the French Goths who were also Aryans, and kindled anew in Britain the light of the faith which the English had put out in blood. He said and ordered the church prayers and the chant to this day called Gregorian chant in great honor of the saint. He guided and consoled her pastors with innumerable letters and preached incessantly, most effectually by his own example. He died worn out by austerities and toils, and the church reckons him one of her four great doctors and reveres him as St. Gregory the Great. The champions of faith prove the truth of their teaching no less by the holiness of their lives than by the force of their argument. Never forget that to convert others you must first see to your own soul.